Okay, this video is called Hyperbole, uh, writing lecture number two. So I gave a previous writing lecture where I went in a lot more of an overview. Uh, this one, and where all this comes from is from, I wrote this book called Rhyme, Rhetoric, and Logic. This is the fourth edition. It's a pretty big book. Um, how many pages in here? About 500 pages. Basically, you know, I wanted to really learn how to write well. I had written a previous book, my straight A at Stanford on the Harvard book, and I had some friends that write for a living, and they told me you know, all my mistakes, and they were right about what they said, so I decided to try to really learn how to write well. Um, and I read tons, like you know, hundreds of books on the subject, and all kinds of blog articles and stuff. So then one of the things this, this lecture in particular about is these are different forms of rhetoric. The Greeks basically studied all the best speakers. To be a good public speaker was very important in ancient Greece. And they said, what are their techniques that enable them to speak and write so well? Um, and so I basically studied all those. Aristotle had a great summary of them. And this hyperbole is just one example of the many. So I'll give additional series of lectures on it. Um, okay, so we'll start out here. The, today's topic is hyperbole, which basically means exaggeration for effect. You know, the classic thing, I'm so hungry I can eat a horse. So um, here's just a quote by Ernest Hemingway. He has some good stuff on how to become a better writer. Most people never listen, nor do they observe. You should be able to go into a room, and when you come out of it, know everything that you saw there. And not only that, if you gave that room any, any careful thought, you should know exactly what it was that gave you that feeling. Always think of other people. Yeah, a good writer has to have that accuracy of perception, and they have to be sensitive to the thoughts, the moods, the feelings of others, and the effect they have on other people. And that kind of reminds me, I like Tolstoy, I like Hemingway better than Tolstoy. They're both very good at um, projecting an accurate description of what had just happened. But I actually don't think they're, they're the top notch. They're not intellectual enough. They're not emotional enough. They're not psychological enough. You know, So Hemingway is a step up, I think, from Tolstoy. I like him better. He's a better person. Um, he's more heroic. He actually was a pretty heroic guy. I made a separate lecture on him. But um, <clears throat> I prefer somebody like, uh, you know, Ghost to ask you, real psychological, the inner motivations. All right, hyperbolic sarcasm, exaggeration and sarcasm go together. So this is from a conversation between my wife and me many, many years ago. My wife's this really beautiful doctor who's really stuck up. Um, so anyways, and she's from Poland originally, you know. So anyways, here's a conversation. I'm reading a book at the table, you know, eating dinner or something. No one else was around when I sat down. And she comes up to me and she says, you shouldn't read at the table. I said, well, when I'm by myself, I like to read. She goes, instead of reading, why don't you get a moonlighting job and make some money for this family? I said, oh, yeah, right. So you can divorce me, then I got to pay double alimony? No way. Then the wife said, you are so fucking autistic. I can't believe I married you. My ancestors were royalty. I said, oh, yeah, right. Every Polish woman says her ancestors were royalty. One of her relatives got cancer at Chernobyl, and her father is an alcoholic. Wife. You are setting a bad example for the children by reading at the table. I said, oh, really? I just finished reading The History of Poland by Missioner, and he said that the peasants did not allow any books in the kitchen, but the aristocrats encouraged their children to read at the kitchen table. So I'm training the children to be aristocrats, and you are training them to be peasants. Wife, I would rather our kids be poor and have normal personalities than be autistic losers like you. Me. You know that retarded guy at the grocery store who bags your groceries? Wife, yes. I said, there's more IQ standard deviations between you and me than between you and him. Wife, oh yeah? I know how to talk to people like you. I have a lot of experience talking to people like you. I rotated through the mental hospital. There were patients there with delusions of grandeur just like you. Me, trying to have an intellectual conversation with you. It's like trying to teach the dog how to read. Okay, uh, hyperbole for comparison, Dostoevsky. From 100 rabbits, you cannot make a horse. Okay, another form of uh, hyperbole is what's called adenata, exaggerata. And again, these terms come from the Greek. The Greek terms tend to be kind of awkward. So a lot of times I would sort of just make up my own term that would help me remember what the, the rhetoric form was. And so here's another example of, you know, a series of exaggerated statements. So this is like a woman saying to a man, not even if I was childless and the last woman on earth and you were the last man on earth would I sleep with you okay so anyway so that's just uh, one little small excerpt from the book and that's it for this lecture